Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you six easy ways to increase your website traffic starting today. Using the techniques and methods that I'm going to share with you in this video, we managed to grow one of our blogs from getting virtually no traffic a year ago to now getting over 5,000 page views a day. And another one of our blogs managed to double its traffic in just several months using the methods that I'm going to share with you today. If you are new to my channel, my name is Greg Kononenko. You might also know me as the Caffeinated Blogger. And on this YouTube channel, I publish regular videos dedicated to getting more traffic, blogging, and affiliate marketing. So make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel just below this video. Click that subscribe button and enable all notifications. That will really help me a lot. And this way I can notify you when I upload my next video. Let's get into the details. As you might know, I am a full-time blogger and affiliate marketer, and I really rely on getting consistent free traffic to my YouTube channel as well as to my blogs in order to make sure that I'm able to continue buying food for my family. So that's why when I quit my job in 2016 at a bank here in Australia, I decided to learn everything that I possibly can about various ways of generating traffic. And that's exactly what I want to share with you today, how to get free traffic to your website or how to increase website traffic for your website or for your blog if you already have one. And that's also one of the most common questions that the viewers of my channel ask. They ask me, Greg, how can I get more traffic to my website? So in this video, I've summarized some very simple tips that you will be able to put into practice today, but that will give you huge results and will help you increase your website traffic. Okay, so method number one to increase your website traffic is to stick to what is called golden keyword ratio. I'm going to show you everything step by step exactly how you can implement it and why every single stat that you can see here on the screen is very important. For disclosure, the first time I learned about this golden keyword ratio was on this website, Niche Site Project, in this article by Doug Cunnington. So I learned it a little while ago, I've implemented it, I've seen really good results. So thank you very much, Doug, and now I want to share it with you guys. Here is how to implement golden keyword ratio in your keyword research before you decide which article and which keyword you want to post on. In our example, let's take a look at some keywords uh, related to travel. So I'm going to type in best beach and best beaches into my favorite keyword research tool called Ahrefs. And let's generate a nice big list of keywords which we can then work with. So first of all, we can see that there are 231,000 keywords that contain either best beach or best beaches. Next, what we want to do is filter out the volume. So we want to go only for fairly low volume keyword terms. So I'm going to put minimum zero, maximum 250. So we just want lower volume keywords that don't get searched as much and don't have as much competition. Next, what I want to do is I want to include only words that have minimum of five words in them. That will eliminate all of the really competitive keywords and will only leave me with keywords that have at least five words. So we are looking at so-called long tail keywords. I also then generally like to put in a keyword difficulty filter and generally I put it to a maximum of seven. So that once again only leaves us very easy keywords to rank for. So all of these things that we've done will just help us to narrow down the simplest possible keywords to rank for. So let's go back to the summary of what golden keyword ratio actually means. So the first thing is we want to look at a volume of 250 or lower. So with our filtering, we have already hit that. The second thing that we need to look at is this thing called all in title under 65. What does it mean? I'm going to show you right now. Now what you want to do is you want to grab each of these key phrases and you want to insert it into Google in a very particular way. So the first thing you want to do is you want to type in all in title, just all in one word, the way that you can see it here on the screen into Google. Then you want to put the semicolon and then you want to copy and paste the keyword phrase that you are considering. So I'm just going to press paste like this. I've got all in title, semicolon, best places to eat in West Palm Beach. And let's click search and see what comes up. Okay, so here we have got 48 results. What does this mean? Very important. This actually means that when we look at the search results on the whole of the internet, there are only 48 pages on the whole internet that have all of these words, best places to eat in West Palm Beach in the title of their page. Why is this important? Well, it's important for the reason that there are only 
48 pages that were specifically targeting this particular keyword term. They were trying to rank for it and they were trying to include it in the title of their blog post. If you compare it with the usual way of searching for that keyword, so if I delete all in title and I'm, I press enter, we can see that we're getting 17,100,000 search results. But Google includes a bunch of other pages that are not very relevant into their search. So it's actually beneficial to, when you're applying this golden keyword ratio, it's beneficial to perform the search in this particular way because uh, the pages that include this in their title are the pages that Google will consider to be the most relevant. So this way you're getting a really true and clear representation of how many pages out there will Google be considering to include in the results that are high relevancy and you want to make sure that you go for keywords that have as few results as possible. So the lower this number, the better that keyword is and the better golden keyword ratio you're going to get. So to calculate our ratio and to check whether it's 0 0.25 or lower, what we need to do is we need to take the number of all entitled results and we need to divide it by the volume of the keyword. So in our example here, let's take 48, which is 48 results that we got, and let's divide it by the volume of our keyword. So we can see that best places to eat in West Palm Beach has a volume of 250, so that's what we're going to divide it by, and our result is 0 0.192. So 0 0.192 is lower than 0 0.25, so we have found our first a keyword that is compliant with a golden keyword ratio. You can read more about this golden keyword ratio. You can just Google it or head over to Niche Site Project. There is an excellent article here about it. But basically, I have had really good results. That's how we managed to increase our traffic on several of our blogs by implementing this rule. And also, you can see the full case study here on the nichesiteproject.com website as well. And the reason why this ratio works so well is because you're looking at uh, results where there are only a few websites competing for that particular keyword search term. Let me give you another example. This will blow your mind, but you can actually find tons of opportunities like this. Check this out. Best places to live in South Carolina near the beach. 200 keyword search volumes. So this is a fairly good keyword uh, to, for you to write posts on. However, if we click and check the results for all in title, there are only three results on the whole of the internet that are directly targeting this keyword search term. What that means for you is that if you write an article targeting this particular keyword, you will have an amazing chance of getting onto page one even with a brand new domain that doesn't have a lot of authority, simply because there are no other websites out there that are actually writing content about this. The second way for you to increase your website traffic is to look at your bounce rate. I shared this case study recently in the coaching and mastermind group that I run for caffeinated niche profits. And as you can see here, I ran a test where I managed to reduce the bounce rate on one of my blog posts from 88.14%. I managed to get it down to 78.06%. Just in case you're not familiar with what bounce rate is and why it's important, here is how this works. Imagine someone types in Sharks and Bora Bora into Google. They find my blog, which by the way is my one right here, travelcroc.com. They click on that search result. And when they land on my site, if right after they land on my site, they click the browser back button, or if they just completely close the browser window, this is considered as a bounced visitor because the visitor came to my site and they did not continue their journey throughout my site. However, if they came to my site and they clicked one of the other links on my site and they visited a second page, then this visitor will not be considered to be a bounced visitor. So if 100 visitors do this, they get to this page and 50 of them click the back button or close the browser window and the other 50 of those visitors end up clicking something else and reading something else from my website, then my bounce rate for this page will be 50%. So how do you reduce the bounce rate? Well, the way to reduce the bounce rate is to insert links into your content linking to other pages on your website so that when people are reading your content, they have an opportunity to click through and read more content from your blog. One of the websites that does it exceptionally well is the ahrefs.com blog. You will see that 
as you're reading any of their blog posts, they have a huge amount of internal links that go to other articles on their site and that keeps the readers on their website. So for example, you can see here featured snippets. This is a link to another one of their blog posts. Knowledge panels is a link to another one of their blog posts. Same with surf features as well. And if the website visitors stay on the page and stay on the blog, they will ultimately make a lot more sales from the same amount of traffic and a lot more ad revenue for the owner of the website. Let's take a look at a quick case study. Let's say your website gets 100,000 visitors per month or per year, but for ease of calculation, let's say per month. And let's say that on average you make $40 uh, per 1,000 visitors. So if we divide these by 1,000 and we multiply these by 40, that means that the monthly revenue for this website is $4,000. And if you manage to bring down the bounce rate of uh, throughout the whole website from 88% to 78% like what we can see here on the screen, that would then mean that these 100,000 visitors that came onto your website, they actually saw 10% more content. So if we multiply this by 1.1, that's 110,000 page views that they generated instead of 100,000. And if we now perform the same monetization calculation, we divide this by 1,000 and we multiply this by 40, then we get $4,400 uh, that would be generated in ad revenue from the same amount of traffic. So just like this, you can actually make 10% more sales, 10% more affiliate sales, 10% more e-com sales, or 10% more ad revenue by simply improving your bounce rate. That will give you extra page views and extra revenue. The third way to increase your website traffic is to ensure that your content is at least as long as the content of your competitors on page one. Let's say you've decided to write an article on Bora Bora facts, which I did with my website. You can see I'm ranking as number two in Google here, my website travelcroc.com Bora Bora facts. Well, guess what? I'm actually outranking Wikipedia. If I scroll a little bit down the page, we can see that Wikipedia, the listing for Bora Bora for Wikipedia is at the bottom of page one. They're probably like number nine, number 10. And my website is ranking as number two. My website does not even have that much authority. And how do you think this happened? How am I managing to rank as number two? And how am I managing to outrank Wikipedia? Well, that's all got to do with content length. If we open up Bora Bora listing on Wikipedia and then my domain, let's check them out. We can actually see that Bora Bora article on Wikipedia is very short. So the actual authority of the website does not have that much weighting and it's much more important to have long content on your site because look at my article. I managed to create a very nice high quality long form content which has got images and if I calculate how many words I have actually published, let's just select all of these and I'm going to use the extension in the browser. This tells me that I've got 1,653 words. And if I compare that with the length of content that Wikipedia have on the same topic and we calculate the number of words here, we can see that it's only 1,122 words. So my article is actually significantly longer and that is how I'm managing to outrank the article on Wikipedia. So the big takeaway for way number three to increase your website traffic is to make sure that your content is in depth and that ideally it is longer than all of your other competitors content that is currently out there on page one. Way number four to increase your website traffic is to use what is called LSI keywords. And if you have no idea what LSI keywords actually are and how to use them, don't worry, I'm gonna break it all down for you. So let's say you're planning to write an article about Bora Bora facts. After you've typed in Bora Bora Facts into Google, you need to scroll down to the bottom of the Google search results and you will see something at the bottom that, that says searches related to Bora Bora Facts. Well, this is Google actually telling you that these keywords right here, Bora Bora History and Culture, Bora Bora Coral Reef Facts, are related semantically to the main search query, which is Bora Bora Facts. So Google tells you that Bora Bora Facts is very similar to Bora Bora History and Culture, Fisher Bora Bora Ecosystem Economy, all of these keywords that are down here. So it's actually a very good idea for you to include as many of these keywords as possible into the text of your article. 
and that will give you a very high semantic congruency, which basically means that for Google, it will look like your article is complete and it covers all of the topics that Google themselves consider relevant to Bora Bora Facts. What this will do is two things. First of all, it will help you rank for more keywords. If, you, if somebody searches for Bora Bora Geography or Bora Bora Volcano Eruption in 2017 and your article that is primary, uh, primarily about Bora Bora Facts happens to contain references to the Bora Bora Volcano Eruption, you will actually also have chances of appearing for this search term. So by publishing one article on Bora Bora Facts and making some short references to each of these LSI keywords, you're increasing your chances of ranking on page one for these so-called LSI keywords as well. And the second thing that it does for you, as I mentioned earlier, is it tells Google that your article is high quality, in-depth resource that is talking about Bora Bora Facts, all of the facts, including all of these other related searches. So it's a very good idea to include them. Way number five to drive more traffic and increase the website traffic is to make sure that you update your old articles. I published this article 21 Bora Bora Facts quite a while ago. I think it has been about three or four years. Now I constantly monitor the rankings of my articles on Google search. And if I start seeing that any of my articles are starting to sleep, so perhaps I was ranking as number one and now all of a sudden I'm number two or number three, I go back and I edit the article. I update it, I insert a few new paragraphs, maybe I add some images and that gives Google a very clear signal that my article is now back up to date and they actually love to display updated content. I've seen it time and time again that this way my article actually gets bumped up the Google search results. So if I start losing position, I update my content, it always boosts and my, my article ends up going up in the search engine result pages. Last but not least, tip number six to increase your website traffic is to include as many facts in table format as possible in your posts. Let me show you a couple of examples. If somebody searches for most remote cities in the world, well, guess what they see? They see my website once again, travelcroc.com, and they can also see this nice sort of summary table. And the reason why it is being shown like this is because this article is formatted in a particular way. Each of the cities that I've listed in this article is formatted in such a way that each of the city names is uh, created as a heading to. So in the back end, the HTML code for each of these says h2 open tag and h2 close tag. Google loves structured content and they process it in a very particular way and they love to display those things in the featured snippets. Another example that I'm gonna show you is here. Look at this average price of DSLR camera. So Google once again displays a snippet that looks like a table that's just impossible to miss and this attracts a lot of attention and a lot of traffic from people who are browsing for that kind of information on Google and are entering these particular search terms into Google. And the reason is that this website here, betterdigitalphototips.com, actually put together a table. And Google loves structured data because they treat it in a very special way and they are very likely to include it in this kind of uh, format that really jumps out at the people who are searching for different things. So properly structuring your content, including tables with as much data as possible, making sure that your headings uh, for list type articles are properly formatted is critical to ensure that you get as much traffic as possible to your website. If you want to see a free training presentation with more details on how you can increase traffic to your website, then check the links in the description below. There you can also learn more about my mentoring and course. To learn more about getting more traffic to your website, check these two links at the top of the screen. I've put a link to the next video that you should be watching right now, as well as a full playlist with all of my traffic videos. Hit that like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.